All righty, welcome back. We are here for our next round one game. Abandoned Kittens facing off against Gentle Heart Gaming. We get into a champion select. We got to see this this time around. We'll see how this is going to go. We see a bard ban actually coming in from Abandoned Kittens. Okay, that has to be targeted. Oh, target. It's 100% a target ban, but it's just the, <laughs> the fact that we're seeing it so early is more what surprised me. The Rumble, not so much. Callista, Senna. Even the LeBlanc, a lot of people don't want to deal with AD of LeBlanc right now. And I can't say I blame them. Yeah. It's like, I get that. But it's leaving open a lot of powerful picks right now. I've talked about the Nocturne before, but Udyr top lane's also been something that we've seen a lot of. Lucian, Varus, yeah. Ash, all these champions let through. I think Lucian's probably, to me, the biggest priority now there that Rumble's is. off table. And there we go. Yeah, they just simply could not leave that one open whatsoever now the udir you mentioned is interesting because i i'm not sure about magical that it is a pick that i think should be blinded early on it's a safe pick it can be flexed around but i think there are some rougher matchups for it i much more prefer this varus varus is a ad carry who can flex into all sorts of different builds if there's an op build for an ad carry varus can abuse it yeah that is true i i will say varus is one of those top tier marksmen right now and that's why i found it funny that we saw the Varus Ash in our uh, one of the games that we casted together. Just because mm -hmm. Ash, I feel like, has also been <laughs> back into that marksman role and has been really strong. Of course, she still can be a uh, support and do very well at it. But mm -hmm. just seeing that those are kind of like the trifecta of marksman with Callista, Jin, I mean, to a degree, Senna, because Senna kind of fills that ADC as a support role as well. Yeah, I think a lot of the supports that can abuse Bloodsong are is really, really powerful right mm. now, Ash being up there. Nico being paired up, and it's worth noting as well, Nico, also a champion that can be flexed around. It could go mid, which is the traditional position. It could also go to support. And True. you mentioned earlier Nocturne being very, very strong, especially when paired with mm. the Nico. So I'm a bit surprised that uh, the kittens here are not even thinking about the Nocturne. No. They've just gone straight for the J4. Yeah, that does surprise me a bit here. But then again, J4 is something that does Ooh, well okay. is that he locks down that Nico and makes it a lot di more difficult for her to get into the back line and actually utilize that Pop Blossom in an effective way, especially when you have the Wombo combo of a Jarvan Flag and Drag Cataclysm Shockwave on top of that with the Orianna. And it feels like in a game of rock, paper, scissors right now, we've oh. got both teams throwing rock. They're both going for engage and team fight. Xin Zhao, a fellow Demacian to match Jarvan. Probably stronger early dueling. J4 probably stronger early ganking to come through. And both great initiators later on in mid to late. Now, I, again, just the surprise to not see that priority on some of these champions that we've seen dominate pro play. If you look at the LCK, look at uh, LCK challengers, even look over at the PCS on how some of these champions have been. We're not seeing some of those. But instead, we are seeing that the Jarvan, the Sin Challenge, like you were talking about. Now with a support pool getting pinched. The Renata Klosk Melio taken off the board as well. I wonder if that's going to continue maybe with the Lulu ban that we've seen kind of creep in her way back into the meta too. Can I just say, I find it really funny that in the first ban phase, we get things like Bard coming out, like more targeted stuff, and nothing picked right now right. is niche in any way. They're all just meta champions. And now the second round of bans as well, the focus into support rule, they're completely ignoring the top lane. And mm -hmm. you're talking about Udir top, that's an option that could potentially come through. I know uh, Jax is another champion that has been flexed around between jungle and top, but still very strong on the top lane. Gwen, a champion who's incredibly strong in the top lane right now. Yeah, I'm not seeing that touched at the moment. Oh, there's that Jax that you are just talking Jax. about. As you spoke it, it is now in existence. But I wonder if we're going to see the top lane picked here just to hold on to that support effect, or if it's going to be the support locked in, or the ADC, since Gentle Hearts having that Ash can be flexed around. There is a flexibility with both Ash and Nico. That you can move around depending on what your composition wants to be, but it is going to be that okay. Nautilus locked in for them. Yeah, I actually like the idea you're floating there uh, about picking your top lane and saving that flex pick. Cassante's still on the table, and he's still it's annoying as ever. Instead, a blind Olaf from the abandoned kittens. Well, not yet. That's not risky. yet. Well, let's see. True. Let's see That's if that gets locked. locked in at the moment. It w could be, especially with a lot of lockdown on the side of Gentle Hearts Gaming. I actually don't hate it, even if it's a blind top lane pick. It is Olaf. It just does a lot to uh, stop the hard lockdown tools that are on the side of Gentle Hearts Gaming. Yeah, I'm, I'm 
for me, when I think of solidified, I didn't necessarily think of the Olaf. I was thinking more like Jackson, uh, Fiora, more like maybe Orn as tank champions. Mm -hmm. I think Olaf is a great champion, oh. but he can be punished in lane, especially by things like a Darius uh, to come through potentially. I, again, I don't know if Beric necessarily plays that one either. It's not uh, something I think he's known for, but... Yeah, I, I, actually, yeah, Barrett's not a super lane dominant player, generally speaking. No, I would imagine the Cassante is something that probably would be right up uh, Barrett's wheelhouse, something I've seen him play in the past. Yeah. Especially with what has been shown now for Abandoned Kittens. Getting that Braum as the final pick, but <laughs> having the Fiora. Okay, we're going to have a spicy top lane. Hello, hello, welcome in. We are here in round one. The next game that we got here is Abandoned Kittens versus Gentle Hearts Gaming. We just got to see the trap. We've loaded up onto the Rift. You can see what everyone has at the moment. I'm still joined in by RMC, a random minion caster. Are you ready for this game as we continue our way through round one? You know what, Matt Magical? I'm not sure I am ready for this. That Fiora lost pick certainly caught me off guard. And I spent the entire time loading in thinking about how this one wants to go. Because it feels like the team's want to do the same things. They've got top laners who want to fight 1v1 mm -hmm. as much as possible. You've mm -hmm. got early aggressive junglers and you've got team fighting on the bot side of the map. <laughs> and we also have double ignite in the top lane. Solidified and yeah, Barrick both on. have TP. <laughs> They're not looking to ever join. It is purely 1v1. That is all this is. That, you know what? Just forget everything. I, I take control of this. We're just going to do this. We're just going to hold <laughs> this here. Nothing else matters. The rest of the map, forget about it. This is what we need to focus on we're gonna zoom we're gonna zoom in we're just gonna, we're gonna look at them look at you all right when are you two gonna fight that's gonna be the question that's all that matters somebody needs to poke their head out if they poke their head out they just need the go sign you know somebody's stepping out vision mm -hmm. uh beric no don't walk away don't nah walk they're away. walking away going the long way to the coward's way out <laughs> disappointed well, that's beric. something i wouldn't call beric to his face especially when he's on his fiora <laughs> i'm gonna say that right now beric your coward's way out how dare you not look for the level one fight as a fiora in ten olaf <laughs> discretion is a better part of valor especially when you're a skilling <laughs> champion as you can tell i couldn't really finish that sentence with a straight face it's it's an olaf you're not wanting to 1v1 an olaf level one regardless of what champion you are I mean, if you pick Darius, actually, even the level one probably yeah, Darius doesn't like, want to yeah, do Even it. the Darius level one, you don't really want to fight an Olaf. <laughs> level two, maybe. Level one, no. Maybe. You know what? Directed camera, we've said before, we made the joke that it's a top laner. This this game, it really might be the lane to keep our eyes on. But let's not sell the other lane short because bot lane has a crap ton of CC. Mm. And for these junglers, while I do think top lane's the most uh, influential Ooh. lane, I would like to see them go bot for some oh. Double oh, ignite. Going down. This is what I was talking about. Level two, the level flash two. away. <laughs> Didn't have the undertow that time around. Solidified nearly was able to get the solo bolo. Surely now, Matt Magical, they're, they're going to take stock and not go in, right? Actually, they didn't base. Beric didn't have the space you to do so. Well, how can you? You don't have TP. They, you go to base now, you lose this lane. Track it on. It was the top lane, but it is completely <laughs> spotted out. And look at the damage that comes in from... Yippity Yahoo Yaha! I love that uh, name as a sub. <laughs> okay, I know that's not their real name. I gotta look up their name. I didn't pull up the roster beforehand, but <laughs> let me get that's that. That's Lojaz, I think. Huh? Lojaz. Oh, is it? Okay. I just yeah, want to make sure. <laughs> All right, where is it? There it is. Where? There we go. In, in the meantime, while you're looking that yeah, up, Lojaz, man, I, I do want to talk about. The top side because not basing from Beric is gonna have worse consequences. If you base, sure, you miss a wave, maybe two, you have no TP. But look what happened. Now Beric can't go back. Krakadon is suffering as well. If that had landed, it would have been body so block, risky. Though, from Beric. At least yeah. trying to make sure you can't body block an undertow. Yeah, you can't you can't blo body block it, but at least you know it's being moral support, like I, I would body block <laughs> this if I could, you know. Uh, it's 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 the thought that counts, I suppose, but as you said. Look at this. As Beric, you're it's a, a catch-22. You go back to base, you lose lane. You stay in lane, you lose lane. No matter what, you've lost lane. Well, the important part is if you stay around, you might you lose your life. And that's a lot worse. Because of that, because Krakadon had to kind of shift up to cover, <laughs> they lost their rip of very again. Oh, no. And look at the pings. Look at the pings. Lojaz on the way there. Oh, my goodness. Looking to really live up to that name of Yippity Yahoo Yaha! 
with the flag and drag on the crack it on. You already used the flash, oh, flash to try to get up before. Arendelle has pathed the round to try to help out, but who else has it? Playmaker. Auto attack, first oh. blood with a command attack as the flag and drag scares away Arendelle. And Krakadon dying for Beric since finally that magical Beric will actually get to base. <laughs> this entire lane's been so bad, and you're still going to miss out those waves because Solidified was pushing the entire time as well. So right now, Abandoned Kittens, great start to this game. Oh, this is, this is an FF at 15. <laughs> like, this happens <laughs> in solo queue. Uh, your top laner is constantly pinging and being like, forfeit, 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 as Hope now almost okay. dies here to rocks with that hook in the bot lane. The arrow won't get the kill, but will at least be a saving grace here for Gentle Hearts Gaming. <laughs> and as this tradition at this point, every time a lane is in jeopardy, the ones who fight are the junglers, mm -hmm. both Low Jazz and Krakadon fighting one. So again, this time the hope actually going to get the base, so they're not going to lose out too much in this bot lane. Much better base timings and for the side of Gentle Heart Gaming. I feel like this bot lane is somewhere you're gonna kind of need to focus on. Leave Beric to his own devices. That top lane's kind of shafted. You're not in a good position for it. Go to that bot side with so much CC instead. So RMC, okay. Normally I hate when players use uh, accounts that don't have their real names that they want to go by in competitive play. But I feel like because yeah. this is going up on my YouTube channel, I know mean, you're watching sure. it on my YouTube channel, hello. Um, it, it worked so much better because we've had some crazy names. I, I'll, I won't spoil all of them. Uh, you'll, people will have to watch other games in order to see them. <laughs> but give it a Yahoo Yaha is definitely going to be a contender for one of my favorites. They, I, I might, maybe I'll run a poll afterwards and see which one's the best one. Oh, but there's a pull in the from rocks. Playmaker having to flash Ooh. on the wall. Wait, no way. No, no, shot. no, no way. Oh, Playmaker, how did you do it? I'll, are we sure that's not Faker on an alternative account? Or I mean, play, it, the, Nick, the name is Playmaker there. Uh, yeah. Making those plays, making the great escape for all the rest of the team. Fights in the jungle, getting the flash oh. in to look for Rock with an exhaust as well. Pop Blossom right, nope. does get the novel knockup, but the Shockwave pulls back in, crack it on, and yippity yahoo yaha again over the wall, picking up the kill. Looking got some blows, getting the cleanse out of Zev. And Zev now has to run the flash, but they got the hit from the Winter's Bite, and they want it so bad the Javelin did not get the kill, nor did the flag. As one little bursting bloom, it. looking back, center getting the dash away as he stands right beside Yibbity Yahoo Yaha. Low Jazz looking clean on this Jarvan. And for a second, I thought Playmaker Survival had baited all of Gentle Hearts Gaming into losing more, but great turnaround from Ariandel and Zev, spacing it, using those Ash Slows so effectively effectively to even things out that fight ends it up being a two for two when it could have should have been so much worse mm -hmm. it really should have that was another one of those wild plays and wild fights i feel like this game is going to be the epitome of insane plays and wild skirmishes as we've already seen every yeah. lane essentially look for those kind of plays yeah and i don't know how like, this is pre-level six for yeah. the yeah. bot lane we're, the, even we're not even eight minutes in. Yet. We're about to hit the eight minute yeah. mark. That, and this is already, all this has happened. Look at that. Basically, the mid six On a hope. How, Devin just no can't flash, get out of no this flash. one. No flash, no dash, but the stand behind yeah. me as they got the re engage and denying the kill going over to Zev. Okay, hope does have to be careful, though. Very, very low on health. Uh -oh. You're trying to low jazz. bait. Yeah, they bait him in. Low jazz again. <laughs> You're everywhere! It's like, how do you do this? He's Carmen San There's Diego all around the world in 80 days as he gets a, a Yahoo! Stun and then and that's Yippity Yahoo! Yahoo! Yaha! <laughs> that was good. And still, again, no level sixes in these bot lane skirmishes. It's just all gas, no breaks right now. These guys just keep going. Crack it on, going for the macro play, taking the drink mid lane. Oh, we one use. One mid lane. Playmaker gets Pop Blossom. Shockwave's back. <laughs> Ariandel to survive as Crack it on. Good just taking the Void Grubs. Is looking for the dive on the Playmaker in the mid lane. When it becomes lightning. lightning didn't <gasps> even connect. So no audacious charge. <sighs> that was so incredibly close. Even as the camera's panning away, I thought it landed for a second. That's how tight it is. And Playmaker, uh, again, from a seemingly impossible position, survives. The gang Barrick, so the fight you don't now. want this. I think I <laughs> know you think go? you wanted okay. that. You thought you did, but you didn't. 
There's an item advantage for the Southern Divide in that top lane. Yeah, that's ready. why. It's a Tunneler against two Long Swords. You're not winning that. And he gets another Cheetah Recall. He's going to come back and leave with Tiamat. Uh, Beric's in a bit of trouble, and Beric didn't opt to base after shoving that wave, so that item discrepancy is going to be massive. Let's see if Yippee Yahoo Yaha Lojaz actually goes up there to take advantage of it, because he should be popping up there in terms of camp clearing anyway. I'll be real. Is it really a Cheetah Recall in the top lane if you're destroying the top lane? Even if the CS doesn't really show the case, you have constantly put this pressure on a Beric. You have an experienced lead against that Fiora, and have made this Fiora work for every inch and every single CS. I get, hmm. what what do what, why do we call it a cheater recall? It's like well, it's, it would be a, a recall where you don't want to use TP, so you're kind of cheating the system, getting an early recall when you don't really have to, but you're not really losing anything for it, so you feel like you're cheating. Okay, so I mean he's but they don't have TP, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and I mean technically you didn't have to recall there, but you did to get the advantage. So. By that definition, I guess we'd still call Ooh, it a chain of corruption. Recall? Oh no, Zev! That Cleanse plunge was late. too late! The 2v2 works out, and Yibbity Yahoo got high low jazz! Denies oh. the Spider Man away because they already got the stun, so the double kill is gifted over to Hope! And Zev unfortunately drew turret aggro right before the CC chain yep. came down. Hope and Sinner perfectly timing that one. Jungle intervention not even needed, but will certainly be snowballed upon as a potential invade comes through. Lojaz has that blast cone. We'll get out of there. But okay, I was saying how this spot lane, after all that had happened in the top lane, is going to be the saving grace here for Gentle Hearts Gaming. No, no longer the case. Not, not even close. Hope is four and one on this Varus. You have a large lead as you've already gotten that Kraken Slayer. It is going to be the on-hit Varus build. What do you do if you're GHG? Seriously, what do you do here? This is kind of the problem. We were talking about in draft the fact that both teams feel like they're throwing rock in a game of rock, paper, scissors, and whoever throws rock harder wins because there's no other way, right? Your, your compositions both want a team fight. They both want a skirmish. So it's not like you can do a comeback mechanic by split pushing, for example, or, you know, a particular cheese combo to come out. You're just looking now to be able to land that enchanted crystal arrow on an isolated target. You're just looking for picks. And Hey, at least you've got Hawkshot with Zev on that Ash. So even if you lose control of an area, there are safe non-committal ways for you to check if it's safe to walk in and to even kick action off. But yeah, man, Magical, by and large, you're just kind of sitting back and praying for a mistake you can capitalize on. And if you're re relying on that, that's pretty much a, a lot of hope gone for you as a team because it's no longer your own agency. You're relying on the mistakes of others and... You have to play around well, that. It makes things so difficult here for GHG. And I'm looking well, out. Maybe maybe they can make a pl play here mid lane. But oh, when Rox gets burst down water. like that and then misses the anchor away, even if they get the double knockout from Ariandel, it's a little too late. The exhaust did so much to deny oh, the damage. The they get the slam down, down to the back line. The smite onto Zev. The oh. burn. Not enough for the flash. Oh, <laughs> the Lance doesn't get the kill. No Gibby the Yahoo Yaha this time. Well, no hope for Gentle Hearts Gaming. They were looking for the pick onto Hope. Couldn't, couldn't quite find it, unfortunately. And everything backfires. And I want to highlight the fact that that actually goes even worse for them because Ariando got baited into going in as well, using that Pop Blossom. And sure, it looks great when you catch multiple members. But if you don't have enough damage to actually kill anybody, what you've really done is just put yourself in the middle of four members with no backup. It was also an amazing exhaust there from Sinner. Literally, the moment True. the damage was coming down, the exhaust came out to deny a lot of that damage that Ariandel would have done. Void Grubs now going down the way of Abandoned Kitten. So we're splitting three and three right now. Neither team will have that Void Might advantage and everything's going to be even. So that dragon that's coming up in less than a minute is probably going to be the big focal point. And unfortunately for Gentle Heart Gaming, that's not going to be a focal no. point that they want to fight. And you can bet your bomb doll Abandoned Kitten wants that fight right now. If you can 4v4, you know, go for that. And we're not seeing a 5v5 anytime soon. Barry and Solidified are making zero moves out of that lane. And I really feel like for Gentle Hearts Gaming that they had to get that six, the six grubs if they wanted that comeback mechanic, essentially. If they yeah. wanted to get back in this game, have a way that they could kind of... This is our fallback. Barrick, you're going to be split pushing. No one's really going to be able to deal with you. Even Solidified will struggle once those Void Knights start getting spawned. Without that, Abandoned Kittens continue to just... just dominate the entirety of the map they are the lords of the rift right now 
Yeah, and I guess there's a chance for Gentle Hearts Gaming to say, okay, we go super, super late, and Fiora will eventually outskill Olaf, but eventually is a very long time away. And with the meta, the game has sped up so much. Games are ending sub 30 minutes more often than not right now. And with that Fiora, you need 40 plus minutes. Dragon on spawn, taken by Abandoned Kittens, and zero contests coming through from Gentle Hearts Gaming. And that's why I feel like it had to be the... the six void grubs right because that would have yeah. at least accelerated that a little bit for barrack made it a little bit more likely that he could have gotten the spikes earlier this actually might help though getting that rift herald for the side of gentle hearts gaming something that they can use to get extra gold that they desperately need as they slowly are falling further and further behind this gold on the side of abandoned kittens who might have found themselves abandoned in the mid lane as playmaker is struggling a little bit that's gonna be the pop blossom flashed away oh. not again Playmaker, you can't keep doing this. How many times has he done that this game? That's, I think, the third time he survived these sort of ganks. And unfortunately for Gentle Arts Gaming, you're not timing this properly. You burn the flash, you need to go for the regank. Mid lane shove coming through from Gentle Arts Gaming, but they're trading a mid outer for a bot lane inner turret. As there's going to be another charge here from uh, Shelly. So it could actually be that it ends up being a Two for two trade. Oh, oh what fans. a shockwave from Playmaker. That's a lot of damage. Oh, Jazz, I, I think you want that. They're all low, dodging away from the root. Get the, the movement coming. speed. That's going to be the Cataclysm locking them in place. In a lot on the, the command attack. Flag and drag Zev killed off the Titanic Hydra might there from low pass as now it is solidified just there to make sure they solidified that lead. Solidified has sprinted from the top lane to the mid lane and now he needs to sprint right back because Beric kept shoving in that top lane and from abandoned kittens really really well played from them. It's not bad for Gentle Arts Gaming that you crack the inner turret all the way in and more importantly you're back in time to defend that mid side turret. So despite how well abandoned kittens played it, I will give this win to Gentle Hearts Gaming. It's not a big one, but every win counts when you're this far behind. Uh, yes, that is true until this happens. Until yeah. until this happens, where Rox just takes one command attack, dissonance afterwards, takes that much damage. They get the tier one in mid lane. They slowly encroach on the territory of GHG, where they're not going to have that jungle to work with anymore. That's how many turrets in total after that play? Four. Four play turrets in total for Abandoned Kittens. Okay, yeah, that's a lot more gold in their pocket. And, you know, I, I thought that Gen Hard Gaming was going to be able to fend off the mid lane. I thought Varric was fine pushing the top side. I thought wrong in so many ways. And with that snowball lead going to Abandoned Kids as well, again, Gentle Hearts Gaming, what's the next step for you? Where do you go? There's no more Herald. There's no more sort of cheap, easy gold for you to pick up anywhere on the map. You now have to fight for every last inch. And for Abandoned Kids, they're just going to show up wherever the objectives are. So best bet for Gentle Hearts Gaming is to try and desync or, or go for the objective that Abandoned Kittens just want. Well, the biggest problem for me is going to be the discrepancy between these two ADCs. Yeah. 3,000 gold separates Jeez. those two and those two alone. Look at the item difference. That is a full item. A full item. Ginsu's already completed for Hope. Well, Zeb, only the Kraken Slayer. As Lojaz is going to be jumped up by the Pop Blossom, taking a lot of damage, Correction. will be burst down. That is something that Farrakh will be happy about as they got their first kill on the board. But now they are locked in a bad spot. Farrakh has to dash over the wall with the flash coming in from Rox. They get that kill, they get that shutdown. That is going to be at least a silver lining here for Gentle Hearts Gaming. You take that. I think that was a great play from Gentle Hearts Gaming. They had no business finding that pick whatsoever, but the absolute lack of hesitation. They saw a single target, they saw Lojaz on his own and went, Okay, we find this pick, we get out. Do we have to burn flash? Yeah, sure. Uh, Rox burns his flash, but he's got hex flash. Mm. He'll be fine. And there was no reprisal, no other objective to take. Baron, Dragon hadn't spawned, True. and you there's know, no good points. Good points. Either. Good points. I like those. The only problem, though, I have is that is one play of many they still have left. That is a start. Sure. They got to continue that kind of play. They have to keep getting this gold, especially for Bear. That, I think, is the biggest thing for me the fact that the Fiora got the kill and bounty gold from it. So at least now you're going to be stronger in that side lane. A little bit more set up for, the, uh, you know, it's not going to be quite 40 minutes now. Maybe looking more at 35 minutes when this Fiora is going to come online. Yeah, it's like the start of that training montage, right? A, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. That was your single step. I actually, oh wow, Varric is interesting. Solidified is not trying to fight this. I actually think Solidified, I thought he could still handle the 1v1, but 
If Southern Fight's backing off from Beric right here, there's nothing to stop Beric from... No, it look, look at the map. Look at the map. Look where everyone okay, is. His whole team right is on the bottom half of the map. He realizes that they don't have that control on the top quadrant. He doesn't know if they're setting up to dive him at that moment. So he makes a wise call. It says, my team's all playing for the bottom half of the map. They're looking to get control around the upcoming dragon so that we can put ourselves within soul points. I would need to play passively here. I cannot get caught out and continue to have this comeback mechanic working for gentle hearts. Yeah, and good call on both you and <laughs> so look by there recognizing the danger and for gentle hearts gaming they're so committed to this play top side. They're just sending more and more and more bodies and oh, surprisingly the battle pins are slow. They're looking for that. They're looking for this turret again. The bounty gold that they can get from that if they actually execute the turn is so it. close. One's gone. But now are the cavalry reinforcements there. They get the knock up on the one, but the arrow out of nowhere connects. Does help out Gentle Hearts as they take down the Olaf. But what about everybody else? Bear could not get the kill on the center. And it's so much damage thrown by him by Hope. Holy Hope showed up and he was just ripping everybody to shreds. He was hitting faster, harder than a turret and all that happening. Well, Playmaker is off split pushing. Oriana, not the best split pusher, but actually among mages, she's not the worst either. She's got a pretty smooth auto attack mechanic and they get an inhibitor turret for an inner. Baron being done as well in Gentle Hearts Gaming. Nobody can even look at the Baron. No TP for Arendelle. There has never been a TP for Barrack. Two members on this Baron and look at Hope, as you talked about. The amount of damage that he did yeah. in that last fight and how quickly it came out. Does the same to the Baron. The abandoned kittens, right now they're telling the side of Gentle Hearts Gaming that they gotta abandon all hope ye who enter this game against abandoned kittens. They're yeah, getting their revenge on every single person who's abandoned this set of kittens. I guess the OQ committee as well, since we did see them <laughs> rather low. Uh, they're popping off. It's huge. And I, you know what, Mad Magical? I, I'm looking at Gentle Hearts Gaming. We've talked about potential win cons. I, I got no hope for them. I don't know how they're coming back. So, you know what? You're the one who, who finds and cooks up all these outlandish ideas, Matt Magical. So, I'm looking at you. Th tell me how you could help Gentle Hearts Gaming get back in. Uh, GG go next. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not what the Gs stand for in Gentle Hearts Gaming. But... In this case, it's definitely going to gonna be GG go next. Because this game is looking dire at the moment. The only hope that I feel like they had was around if they got six void grubs and not getting all six of them <laughs> at this point in the game the baron on the side of abandoned kittens as they are sieging down these structures the tier two quickly toppled in mid lane as they look to rotate into the top lane and do the same you know th this is a good time i guess to give props to the spot lane of hope and center because i think playmaker we talked a lot about how he's dodging all the ganks buying a lot of space and time but Hope and Sinner have been on point with punishing and snowballing their leads as well. Six, one, and three. Highest, or, well, second highest because no Jazz had more activity. But that's really high kill participation for a bot. It is. It really is. They've done a lot of work. And, well, I will say that low Jazz, Krakadon, they were both all over the map. It was low Jazz and then in tandem with the bot lane doing so well to get them these leads that allowed Lojaz to constantly move around the map, always being everywhere he needed to, right place, right time. And now that place is inside of the wow. base of Gentle Hearts Gaming as they take down their first inhibitor. One minute left on this Baron buff and they just absolutely shredded inhib topside. Bought inhib is exposed as well. So with the pressure of supers coming in the top lane, abandoned kids if they want, they can also just group up Five man that bot side, or they could go for four one. Either way, I don't think that's a great response. Oh, the arrow! Oh, arrow! That's, that's gonna be a death charge. But pl oh, no, playmaker, can you stop? Yeah. Can you play? Oh my god, I, my brain can't handle this. My magical. When we're looking at this, it's simple. Is flash up for playmaker? If yes, ignore, because <laughs> you aren't killing him anyways. The f uh, just how many times? He's died once. Yes, he should, that yes. should be that How should be times? six. Yes. <laughs> that should be six. Most players, that is six. Somehow playmaker only the single time. I'm trying to remember how he died too in the beginning of the game. Wasn't that him actually going forward and trying to get the kills? That yeah, it was, was yes, it was. it was. He TP back into a play that was around River around uh, after he had already gotten out. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so no... Came back in with next to no health to try to back up the rest of his team and died for it. N new game plan for Gentle Hearts Gaming. You have to bait Playmaker into getting aggressive or he's just not going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much threaten the rest of his teams because obviously he doesn't want to abandon the kittens on his team. He's staying right next to them. They're all together. They're all a happy family and they are looking to take this game in round one against Gentle Hearts Gaming. Right now, they just literally sat waiting for Dragon to spawn. 10 seconds. Abandonkins are so far ahead of the curve. They have nothing better to do. And for the side of Gentle Heart Games, it kind of looks like they want to fight this. It's not advisable, but uh. they kind of don't have any other choices anyway. So I guess better to go on a blaze of glory. Oh, they can't. No, they can't. Very 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 has no TP, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, no TP. Spotted out top lane, and they have to catch that wave because the supers were starting to pour into the vase. If you don't catch that, then... You are really doomed at that point. <laughs> yes, because Ocean Soul, uh, 7k gold lead, mm -hmm. and a super fed 80 carry 6, 1, and 3 isn't dead enough for you. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we've been saying this game's been over for quite some time. The only thing that's left to do is actually kill the Nexus. As Gentle Hearts Gaming, most of them pushed back into their base. Only Barrack really outside of it. And he's got to get back soon because with the Siege... Set up in mid lane, all five here for Abandoned Kittens. They're gonna raise the structure real quickly here, as you can see it getting melted away by Hope. No turrets of standing, so those inhibitors are bait. <laughs> Wait, Gentle that's Heart's a TP continent. behind by Ariel. Yes. That's very the far, you have a long way to go, and rocks is gonna be the target. You talk about throwing rocks, a well, big rock gonna smash the little <laughs> one. The they get him out of there, and Ariel, where is he? Where has he been this whole time? I've waited for him. Finally, he shows up huge. My man. Awesome. But what does it do as Barrick is gone? Solidified was able to take him down. The flash comes in from center. Rocks bailing out of there because they lost even with a huge ult from Ariandel. It did nothing to stop the abandoned kittens from taking this game. Chantal Arts Gaming, they killed Hope. That's got to count for something, right? It was completely hopeless. I was to say, this game was hopeless for them as they did not get that one. What a victory for Abandoned Kittens.